Miley has his reasons, and he's not put, in, put them in the lineup. But uh, you know what? If you're Jeff Francis, you say thank you. That's right. Ken Griffey Jr. tried to talk his way yeah. into the lineup this evening, but Dave Miley said, no, we're going to sit you down at least initially. Let's take a look at the lineup for the Cincinnati Reds. Ryan Friel, kind of a pain in the neck type of player, a guy you love when he's on your side in particular. He'll lead things off, he'll be in center field. Felipe Lopez, learn that name. He's a very good player, a shortstop with pop, and he's hot with the 14-game hitting streak. Then Casey Kearns, Joe Randa comes over from Kansas City. He's done a nice job. Rich Aurelia now playing second base. Jason LaRue is behind the plate. Jason Romano, who had a, a short stint with the Colorado Rockies, former number one pick. And then Eric Milton, former Minnesota twin, and most recently with the Philadelphia Phillies. He is a left-hander, and he'll be on the mound and hitting ninth. Well, George, quite honestly, I'm a little surprised because you and I sat here after we were allowed back upstairs after the tornado yeah. warning, and we were looking uh, at it wait, rain wait, 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 sideways. Wait, 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 wait a minute. I'm going to explain something here, folks. I, I was raised for the majority of my life in Oklahoma, and when I walked out the door, my little partner standing in the doorway, I said, I know it doesn't happen often here, but when you hear those sirens, the best place not to be is in your booth with the windows open on the fourth floor of a ballpark you need to go to the basement because i just saw toto and i saw the wicked witch just fly by about two seconds ago uh, how about jeff francis huh what's he done in this ballpark he's been outstanding four and two overall 56 and two-thirds the walk's a little high but that's mostly the damage in a couple of, of ball games 35 strikeouts 298 the opponents have hit against him i think it's important he locates his fastball in i think he struggled the last two starts and that's something that he's done very well throughout his career Work inside softly. Now, on the outside, excuse me, on that outside part of the plate with a right-handed hitting lineup, bust in soft away, and I think the hard hook is good. If he can throw that curveball behind the back leg of a right-handed hitter, you're going to be able to see a lot of success. And I think, too, Drew, whenever you look at him out on the hill, and, and these are the points I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to circle right now for him to have success. He's got to hit all four corners of that catcher if he's going to have a chance to win and beat this team tonight. Do you believe it's not raining? I mean, it rained. Well, I can't tell you how hard it was raining, yeah. but it was raining hard. It, it's not. And, folks, I hope everybody's getting home safely, yeah. I, that if you're there, because obviously flooding throughout the city. Yeah. And if you're home, stay home. Yes. Well, with the first baseman's glove is Luis Gonzalez, and that was not part of the original plan tonight for Clint Hurdle. Todd Helton was in the lineup. I mean, he was in the lineup every day. We were just notified literally 30 seconds ago that Helton was scratched. We don't know why as of yet. As soon as we do, we'll pass it along. But Luis Gonzalez is at first base. The Rockies have had to completely reconfigure their lineup. Jeff Francis' first pitch of the ball game to Ryan Friel is down and away. Ball one. And the second pitch is also down low. I would think it's a good night to pitch, George. It's uh, a little chilly. It's a great night to pitch, and the reason why, you can just work off the fist and the end of the bat. So two keys that Francis has to think about. At the knees for a strike. Sam Holbrook pumps the right arm. He's calling balls and strikes this evening. Larry Vanover at first. Jim Wolf at second base. Randy Marsh is working third base. Creel's a guy that can play second, third, center where he is tonight he'll work the count he's a lot like you know david Eckstein, clint barmas he just demands that he's in the lineup every day he's originally thought to be a utility kind of player barmas played by clint over to luis gonzalez let's take a look at the rockies defense as J.D. Klosser's behind the plate. He'll hit right-handed against the lefty Milton tonight. Holiday, Wilson, and Moore in the outfield. Atkins has been inserted into the lineup. He was not in the original lineup. Gonzalez was playing third. Relaford was there throughout at second. Barmas, of course, at short. Helton, again, scratched a few moments ago. So Gonzo moves over to first. One out, and that pitch is down low to Felipe Lopez, a 295 hitter. And, George, he gets your attention because... He's got some pop in there. He's got eight home runs. Yeah, you just don't get lazy with a fastball. You got to make sure you have a good placement of the pitch, as Francis did there. In fact, in talking to 
several members of the Cincinnati organization. They said, you know, right now, if you had to select one guy off the Cincinnati Reds who will represent the club at the All-Star game, every team is represented by at least one. You know, Sean Casey's an obvious one at 319, but Felipe Lopez would get some thought. High fly ball to Matt Holiday in left field. And some consideration. Two outs, and that will bring, as you look at Junior, bundled up. He's got his family with him in town. Yeah, the kids, the wife, they're all here. I'm sure the malls at Cherry Creek and a few other places pretty happy they showed up in town. Kids yeah. love to shop. Boy, do I know that. Well, he's like super dad. I mean, he, he's, the, he's out there rolling around with his kids most of the time when he's not at the ballpark. Sean Casey riding a nine-game hitting streak. And this guy's a lot like Todd Helton. I mean, he could care less whether you're righty, lefty, whether you move up and throw from 45 feet. He hey, just hits. And he takes a lot of time, which, and he does it, I don't think, on purpose. It's the preparation that he takes in between each pitch. But the reason I say that is because pitchers like to work in rhythm. Catch and throw, catch and throw, or, or you know, get back into the box, and you can see the array of things that he goes through, the adjustment of the gloves, the tap of the hat, and the late kicks, and everything else before he's prepared to hit. And that can really disrupt the rhythm of a pitcher. Well, if you're going to miss, that's a good place to miss down. Two and one. Sean Casey, a year ago, he hit 324 with 24 home runs and he drove in 99. A lifetime 304 hitter. And that's inside three and one. four on Casey that'll bring up Austin Kearns they keep waiting for Kearns to have that breakthrough season Austin a guy with a ton of ability big power to all fields staying healthy has been a problem for Kearns a year ago he played just 64 games he had thumb surgery Missed most of the summer and into the latter portion of the season. And early on, he got hit by a pitch and broke his forearm. And right now, he's in a terrible slide. He's 0 for his last 21, which is the worst slide of his career. Hitters are a lot like pitchers. Anytime you start to struggle at the plate, you try new things, you try other problems. And I think that's one of those things that, uh, you know, you just try to experiment too much versus really relying on everything you've done in your career to get where you are and how you hit. If you can hit, it'll turn around. You know, you see a lot of young guys struggle. They'll come up and they're just unbelievable. And then the next year, they really struggle. And then if they find out right where they're at, Drew, we've talked a lot about this. You look at a guy's numbers in the minor leagues, he's going to be within 10 points either way of his lifetime average at the minor league. Ground ball up the middle, and it had top spin. It goes on through. Casey stops at second. So that ends the 0 for 21 slide of Austin Kearns. And they're two on with two outs for Joe Randa. Well, the infield's fairly dry, but the outfield's not. This ball had an awful lot of topspin when it crossed over Desi Relaford into the outfield. Watch Preston Wilson get to this baseball, though. Very carefully kept that ball in front of him in case there was any thoughts at all of Casey trying to head his way to third base. I'm always amazed how well this field drains. You'd have no idea that this field absorbed probably two inches at least of water over a two-hour stretch of time. You know, if you look over behind third base, that's the area that just got hammered. Why? Because that's where they dumped the tarp. I mean, that's, it's the easiest, I wouldn't say easiest, but that's the way they peeled the tarp back. The second time, they went over the first base area because that third base and, and behind shortstop was like a swamp. Well, Francis is quickly ahead of Joe Rando 0-2. See if he throws in the breaking pitch. 
Haven't really showed it yet. Solid numbers for Randa. That's what he is. He's a solid player. Here's the breaking pitch, and he fouls it off. The last couple of years, George, it seems that as bad as Kansas City was, when you looked at their numbers, the one guy who seemed to be pretty consistent was Joe Randa. Randa and Sweeney, the two guys yeah. that really carried that ball club, but Randa, the one guy that, you know, just amazing how good he really was. Ground ball right side, Desi Relaford has the second hop, lobs it over to Gonzo, and that's all for Cincinnati in the top of the first. They hit in a walk, they leave two. The Rockies with the bats when we come back. Back at Coors Field, bottom of the first, Clint Barmas swinging the bat with a donut on it, getting ready to go. Here's the Rockies' reconfigured lineup. Todd Helton, we just heard, has flu-like symptoms. That's why he was the late scratch. And Again, he is the proverbial day-to-day. -day. Clint Barmas will lead things off to be followed by Luis Gonzalez. Matt Holliday slides into Helton's role in the three spot. Then Wilson Moore, Garrett Atkins, Desi Relaford swinging a good bat. J.D. Klosser has come on offensively as well. And Jeff Francis against Eric Milton. And his first pitch is right there. Milton has a nice resume, George, but one of the things that really jumps out at you, 60 innings pitch, he's give up, given up 20 home runs. That is the most in the National League, and he led the National League in that department last year, and you don't want to lead that. And that's league, not a good category to category. be number one in. Out of 80 hits given up, 25% have left the yard. Man, that's a big number. And he's pitching tonight at the wrong park. Randa, good stop. And his home park is not the best if he's given up a lot of fun. No, balls. and that ballpark's not a lot of fun either. I guarantee in Cincinnati, the new yard, it leaves there in a hurry. Hey, look at the overall numbers, 3-6. Ugly earned run average, 7.05, 60 innings, only 15 walks, though. That is one strong point that he has. He will pound the strike zone, 36 strikeouts. And home runs are mounting, 20 allowed. We've talked about that. Good at Coors. He has won one ball game here. Off speed and a good move. He will work both sides of the plate, not afraid to back it off either. Gonzo at 284 with three home runs. By the way, out of those 20 home runs that Milton has given up, 10 of those have been solo shots. Lopez completes the play to first, two outs. Here's what the Reds look like defensively, brought to you by Rico as you glance at Jason LaRue, their everyday catcher. Romano in left field, Ryan Friel's in center, and Austin Kearns in right. Randa and Lopez on the left side. Rich Aurelia, a longtime Giant shortstop in the past. At second base, Sean Casey, of course, at first. And there's LaRue behind the dish. Got a couple of numbers to look at on Milton, too. The opposition, first three innings of a ball game, have hit 270 against him. But as he gets past the fourth, I'm sure this is why they get to the bullpen in a hurry. The opposition's average 350. A veteran guy knows how to pitch. When you say 20 home runs but 10 solos, only 15 walks. How many times have you heard a manager say, I'd rather see him smoke it than I would to sit here and watch him walk guys see the game? Frequently 0 and 2 on holiday with the extraordinary day yesterday. A couple of home runs and a double. First pitch he saw, left center and gone. And then his next at bat reached out and hit the foul pole. And I think the hardest ball he hit all night, George, was the double late in the ball game down the left field line. I guarantee you put a dent in the pads because it was one hop right at that 347 sign and it didn't land on the grass. It landed on the on the warning track. That gets any sort of elevation. He's got a three homer ball game. As it was yesterday, the second time in his career, he's hit two in a game. He is seeing it, as they say, very well. As further evidence, he's been on base 10 the last 13 times he's come up. By the way, I want to say a special thanks to Mark Rasmussen. I and mean, this guy, you don't realize today, they had a tryout on this field this morning. Had two rain delays yesterday. They had hail. And yet they had a minor league uh, invite tryout this morning. 
there's on Rez. the ballpark. Yeah, there's Rez. Then they had to get the park back in shape again for tonight's ball game. The rain hit, and then dumping the tarp and doing it all. He's had a long couple of days, but still one of the finest playing surfaces in baseball. Without question. And again, I'm amazed. I said it a few moments ago that the field looks as good as it does. You look at grass portions, the warning track portions. Ball four. Nice job by Matt Holiday. Behind in the count. He works out a walk against a guy who does not walk many. So Holiday to first. Preston Wilson will come up. You know what was lost in the ninth inning yesterday as you look at Dave Miley? Preston Wilson leading off the ninth. The Rockies are down 7-5. He's behind 0-2. And he smoked one up the middle. Absolutely, he did. He set for eight innings. It wasn't like he played in the whole the ball game. He set over in the dugout, set through the rain delays, got a fastball up and drilled it. Rest in the last eight nine days playing without the knee brace. And his movement less encumbered. Well, after what? having as many knee surgeries as I've had, I know that wearing the brace or having your knee taped when I was playing, they taped it and. You really just feel like you're in a cast. I mean, you just can't move it. You don't have the same flexibility you normally would have. Oh, one to Preston. That misses inside. One ball, one strike. You know, not only did Milton give up, you know, he's given up 20 home runs this year, but last year he gave up 43, which was the most in the National League. It's the American League record 54 by Burt Blylevin. It's, it is by I watched. I mean, I was there. I, did, I just can't remember the number, but I was there. It's 50. Because I don't know. Jim Wiesner was the equipment guy then. So, in anticipation of Burt giving up the Gopher, the home run, he called the University of Minnesota and said, "Could I borrow your mascot uniform, the Gopher?" So when Burt gave it up, he won the game. But when he gave up the 50th home run, when the game ended, everybody's high-fiving, and here comes Jim Wiesner running out on the field in his Gopher uniform. Bly Levin with 50. Jose Lima. Ground ball, third base line. That is a fair ball. Holiday can run a little bit. And he's watching the play right in front of him and he'll have to stop as Romano got it in quickly at third base on the double by Wilson. Second and third with two outs. Now you mentioned Holiday could run. We watched Romano run. This guy can fly. Jason Romano was in the Rockies organization. Ball's hit right down the line, but Romano took such a great angle on the baseball. I mean, it's right out in front of Holiday as he makes the turn here. Now pick up your coach, Gallego, and they just decided to put the brakes on. Dustin Moore steps in. And the curveball misses well as kicking Todd Green before the game. Matt Holiday was wandering around the clubhouse. I said, Greeny, you're a veteran guy. Why don't you get on Holiday? Tell him to get in shape. <laughs> I mean, it's like a statue. Yeah, it re I mean, like he, a Greek god. He is one of the strongest guys you will see, Matt Holiday. One and zero on Moore, and good pass through the zone. Fouls it straight back. One and one. Well, Moore has seen Melton three times, base hit twice, a home run. One of those hits. Rockies a chance to get an early lead against Eric Milton and the Reds. Here's the 1-1. One, one. Down 2-1. How about Moore's numbers against the Cincinnati Reds in his career? Seven at bat, six hits, two home runs. Wow. Well, that wasn't a hard choice for Clint Hurdle to put him in. Right center wide open. And a big gap out there in right center. Boy, that one hung. Yeah, Moore knew it too. You just see him. You know, you watch a hitter's reaction, and when the ball shoots off of the bat, if they miss foul ball, and you look at him, and they're just giving you the look like, man, oh man, I just let one go by. Could have put it on a tee better for me. Particularly at this level, you don't get many opportunities. You know, very rarely does a pitcher make the same mistake twice. About more three and two. Atkins on deck. Holiday's at 30. Walk Wilson at second. He doubled. Go, 
Ball four. And they're loaded up in the first inning for Garrett Atkins. You know, I normally don't show walks, don't want to, but I want to show this pitch and show the respect that Melton has for Dustin Moore on a 3-2 pitch. He comes with the slow hook and jerked up by LaRue, and he's thinking he's not so much looking in at home plate like, why wasn't that called a strike? It's more, how did you take that on a 3-2 count? Three straight innings going back to the eighth inning yesterday that the Rockies have loaded the bases. Fastball is up. Yeah, for Atkins, you got to gear it up about two minutes ahead of game time. Wasn't in the lineup originally. Obviously, these young kids hit every single day in the cage when it's not hitting on the field. That shouldn't have been an issue. It's just a, a mind thing. You got to get yourself prepared to get in the ball game and, and perform. Garrett's in a little bit of a funk of late over his last 11 games, just four for 32. His previous 10, he was hot, hitting 394. That'd be a great time to bust out. Bases loaded, two gone in the first. And the 1-1, one, one, good rip, 1-2. and two. You know, the Rockies have had some pretty good cuts at the baseball. You think of what Barbas did, first shot down the third baseline, fielded brilliantly by Lopez. And then all of a sudden, uh, excuse me, Randa, I mean, one bifocal away. <laughs> <laughs> By Randa at third base. So, I mean, the ball's been hit hard. They've had some chances. Paul Wilson hit was hit hard. Fastball just missed. 27 pitches in the inning. 14 for balls, 13 for strikes. Now get into that. Reconfigured bullpen early of Dave Miley. Two and two. Hard hit ball, but right at Lopez. Gonna have to go the long way. And he does so in time. Well, Atkins hit it on the button, but he hit it right at Felipe Lopez. So Eric Milton escapes a big jam in the first. There was a hit, two off. No scores. We go to the top of inning number two at Coors Field with George Frazier. I'm Drew Goodman. Snow up in the high country. I wonder if it's snowing right now. I mean, it's chilly enough. It seems like downtown that it could be snowing up there. Keith Blyer roaming around the ballpark this evening, we believe, or maybe just staying indoors. We'll find out in a little bit. Rich Aurelia steps in. Used to seeing a really in a giant uniform with the Seattle last year and then down to San Diego. He pops out to right field, one gone. That'll bring up Jason LaRue with one out. LaRue has been swinging the bat well over his last 10 games, hitting 385. In fact, he has a 10 game hitting streak. Prior to that, he was 0 for 24. Even with the 385 mark, his average just at 238. Guy with power, though. And he hits this a ton to right center field, but that's not really flying real well. And Moore handles that one easily. So too quickly gone, and Jason Romano will come up. The Reds began this road trip. It's just a six game trip in Houston. They lost two of three down in Houston. Eight and 16 out on the road. And Romano lashes it down the left field line. And it's all the way to the wall. It'll be a double for Romano with two outs. Well, a little bit more about the Cincinnati Reds as we are like you seeing them for the first time this year. 
They're fifth right now in the National League Central. They've lost six of their last seven on the road. And the opposition has had their way with the pitching staff, whether it be the starters or the relievers of the Cincinnati Reds. They've made some changes. I mean, Danny Graves was released a little more than a week ago. He was their closer and a high price closer. That did not sit real well with a lot of the veteran players of the Cincinnati Reds. They were very disturbed by the dismissal and how evidently Danny Graves was let go. One ball and one strike. There's Junior. He's ready to go skiing. Milton's a pretty good hitter. You have to be careful with him. And he takes a big hat. In fact, he had a home run earlier this year. Graves between 96 and 02 saved 129 ball games for the Reds. I remember in 03 they made him a starter. That didn't work out. He went 4 and 15 with a 5.33 ERA. And in the last year plus, just two and seven with an ERA close to five again. Where he did save 51 ball games, blew 11 over the last year plus. 2 2. See you later. He overmatched Milton with that fastball. First punch out of the ballgame for Jeff Francis. Romano is left at second. Middle of two. No score at Coors Field. Reds are scoreless. We head to the bottom of the second inning. There's a restaurant in Coors Field. In fact, there are many restaurants in Coors Field. I'm Keith Blyer in the Sandlot Steakhouse and Brewery. And Reyna right here has already hooked me up with a white and dark chocolate. Rice Krispie. It's even got a little baseball in it. Let's uh, take you on a quick tour of the Smokehouse and Brewery, and we're going to start. We're going to start here because it it says uh, start here. A great menu, and it starts with a very appetizing salad bar. This is healthy food. Frazier might want to look into this. This is healthy food for George Frazier, and they got these big tostada shells that you can use either to put your salad in or to wear on your head when it's raining at Coors Field like it is hey, tonight. Hey, Keith. Yeah. Keith. Yeah, what? What's wrong with the diner? The Denver diner with three eggs over medium, sausage and eggs, and, uh, you know, the whole work. Everything in moderation, Frazier, is the only <laughs> point that I would make to you. So maybe one egg instead of three eggs. Well, here's, here's the other thing I want to tell you. Drew and I ate a long time ago tonight, and if you're standing down there, Open up that wallet, and we'll take a salad. I like thousand. He likes uh, creamy. Italian. Now wait a second. You guys are up there in that press <laughs> box with your catered free meals. Wait a minute. Wait a, wait a minute. Else. Sam, Sam would like one also with ranch, and Doug would like one with vinaigrette. Okay, let me take that down for a second. Okay, got it. Yeah. You <laughs> don't. Have, way, you don't have way, a rice crispy with a baseball on it. So hey, there. Well, wait. Parker's up here too, and he really likes ranch. Oh, that's great. Good for him. <laughs> Listen, um, there's a baseball game out there. You might want to. It's got out you. there. We'll, we'll pick up on it. Keith, enjoy your meal. <laughs> I will. We'll check back with uh, Mr. Blyer in a little bit. J.D. Klosser swinging the bat well, primarily from the left side of late, so he's getting a start from the right side this evening against Eric Milton. 0 2 single whistled up the middle by Desi Relaford. Desi with an eight game hitting streak now. Hitting above 410 over those eight ball games. Outfield straight up against Klosser. That ball three. JD always has had a pretty good eye even going through the problems the first six seven eight weeks of this season in terms of producing offensively he gets his walk second on the club to Helton in walks takes the automatic three and one uh, it's impressive that a young player has that much patience 
you, know, you start to press you start to worry about whether you know are they going to send me down they're going to keep me here and you start to try to extend and do different things you normally don't do and I think that's been the impressive thing about his patience in the walks. I would think is that's in there as well. It's even more difficult to be patient when you are struggling because you want to go up there and you want to hit a line drive so badly somewhere that you get jumpy. Well, that's that feeling like hitting a golf ball just square in the, in the middle of that driver and you feel that feeling up in your hands. What's that you like? Want, you want that feeling as a hitter that you know you just barreled it, squared it, and just smoked that thing like he did in Chicago on the home run. By the way, uh, fans, remember that the Rockies' wives are hosting their annual children's book drive before the game Sunday, June 12th. Bring in your new, you can go buy a bunch of new ones, bring them by, or gently use children's books. It will benefit the Denver Health Reach Out and Read program. Cash donations are also appreciated to purchase books in different languages. Collections will be taken at all gates from 1130 to 115. That is June 12th. What a great cause. Desi starts up ball four. So two on for Jeff Francis with nobody out. And as Francis makes his way to the plate, we'll make our way to our studios here in Denver and Dave Vance. Dave? Hey, thanks a lot, Drew. One game final in the National League so far. The Braves taking on the Pirates. Bottom of the sixth. And that is Jose Castillo coming up with a two-run single to make it a 3-0 Pirates lead. And check out the congratulations he gets from Gerald Perry. Knocks off his helmet. They have a good laugh. They can laugh as they win. All right, Dave, thanks. We'll be checking back with you periodically. Braves have struggled a little bit of late. The Pirates have been playing pretty good baseball. Third walk of the ball game already for Eric Milton. His season high is three in a game. And he's done that only once. I mentioned this yesterday that the Rockies pitchers were out early two days ago off of a pitching machine practicing the art of bunny. I hope it works out here. Well, Jeff will have three opportunities. Hopefully he won't need all three. He did. That's a perfect bunt. Yeah, bunt to the left side and nearly thrown into right field by Randa. Yeah, that's going to cost Jeff Francis too. And the only reason I say that jogged all the way up the line on the first baseline and the throw was high. He did his job. I mean, he sacrificed over, but you could have maybe had the bases loaded here. Francis running up the line and right there tried to speed it up. Randa just worked under, and anytime you throw that sidearm underhand delivery, you have a chance, a chance of throwing the ball high. Great play by Casey. Barmas with two in scoring position and one out. Flynn hit it hard his first time up. Joe Randa made a backhand stab and threw him out. He was robbed last series by Abraham Nunez, who made a similar play for the Cardinals. A couple games ago, Barmas produced three straight doubles, his first three at bats. Flynn at 324 coming in, leading the club with 30 ribbies. Gonzo will be next. No score, bottom of two. Fastball count for Barmas. And he got a heater and he fouled it off. You know, the other thing I think is difficult for a team when you have an off day prior to a series on the road. And you're in such a different regiment when you're playing every day on the road, then you fly into a city, you have an off day, you have a day to spend, and yesterday was a decent day till about noon, maybe a little later than that, whether you're on a golf course or where you are spending time with your family. I just think it takes you out of your base hit up the middle. Crosser stopped for a moment, but he will still round third and get to the plate. A two-run single for Clint Barmas, and the Rockies lead it two to nothing. This is a patient at bat, George. It's a fun kid to watch play the game, I can tell you that. He, it seems like he pounds on you to, to get it where he wants the count, go down and get a pretty good pitch. That ball down around the knee area. A little below, and he just drove the ball right back up the middle. You're going to watch J.D. in the background. He throws for a second on the line drive to make sure it got through. And it was waved home by Gallego, and the throw never appeared at the plate. 
Barmas draws a throw. Forty four pitches and you're in the second inning. That's a bunch. And there's one out. Five ribbies for Clint Barmas over his last three ball games. See if he can get a read on Milt. And a little sidestep that he uses to the plate. I mean, he doesn't lift his leg high enough. Doesn't go back of the rubber, so then he's committed to the plate. So you got to look at different moves. If it starts to come to the first base side, then how much higher does he pick it up? Can you see the leg movement early enough that you can take off? I mean, this veteran guy with pretty good move to first base. And he slide stepped him. One and two. Gonzo waits this pitch down the right field line out of play. Rockies come in 16 and 36. The Reds 21 and 32. Milton in his last start didn't last very long against the Pirates in Cincinnati. Seven runs in three innings. He gave up nine hits. Three of those hits left the building. And he was gone his shortest stint of the year. This ball will be a base hit to left. Barbas puts on the brakes at second. First and second, still one out, and here comes Holiday. The pair of home runs yesterday, Holiday with four on the season. He is hitting 13 of his last 14 games and even 400 over that stretch, including three of his four home runs. Rockies up two to nothing. Relaford led the inning off with a single. Klosser walked, sacrifice. Along by Jeff Francis, and then Barmas drove him in with a base hit to center. Well, with, with runners on first, the slide step and what it affects Milton, he was about one two five to one three. Now all of a sudden, with a runner at second, and the higher leg kick, allow him to set on that back leg longer, allow the arm to catch up. He's almost a one eight to two seconds before the ball gets to the plate. And the way you time that, you go on first movement. As soon as he moves the leg, the glove, whatever it is, to go to the plate, that's when you start your stopwatch. Backs are deep in the hole. Felipe Lopez just did get the force on Gonzalez. It'll be first and third for Wilson and two outs. <laughs> Well, I was about to say before the ball was hit, you talk about the 1A, 1A5 to home plate. With Holiday, who's 6'3, 6'4, 235, 240 pounds for LaRue to throw to third base. More difficult situation had Barmas taken off, felt like he could get a good jump. Obviously, it doesn't matter now. This ball rifled, but right at Joe Randa. Can't hit it any harder than that. The Rockies do come up with a couple of runs. Relaford and Klosser got on to lead the inning off. Barmas brought them around. Rockies leading two to nothing as we go to the top of the third. And if Jeff Francis mows down three in a row, strikes out the side in order during this inning. Jimmy Carter from Longmont, the former president, has relocated. 
We win a steel FS45 lawn trimmer. To enter, just email your name, age, address, and phone number. Contest at FSNRM.com. And by the way, Drew told me the other day that if a Rockies pitcher does not strike out the side by the by the last game of the season, whose ever name is up on the last day of the season, we'll buy you the weed eater. We got to do that. I will I'll buy the weed eater for you. Whose ever name's up on the last. It's hard to do. Well, it's very hard to do. I know in Minnesota they used to have the mow them down inning. You get a free lawnmower. It's hard enough to get three punch outs, as you know, oh, George, man, in the yeah. inning. Yeah. And then in order. Here's the one two to Friel. Fastball runs away two and two. And I think, you know what, as a bonus, I'll pick up the weed eater. Why don't you, if it doesn't happen, you buy me one of those tractor mowers. All right? Just what you need. You know what? <laughs> I guarantee the neighborhood would vote on that to not see you right there on the track. Right on one the other day. Line drive to Moore, one out. Borrow the neighbors. We have tractor races in the neighborhood. Hanslers. <laughs> <laughs> Had to get the baseball uh, diamond in that's order. That's right. Absolutely. Now, D'Angelo Jimenez was released recently. And since this kid, Felipe Lopez, was given the everyday job at shortstop over 30 ball games, he's hitting 302 with six home runs. He's also added 13 doubles. Hey, look at him, he's just a thick kid. This is a big, big kid. He was the number one pick of the Toronto Blue Jays back in 1998. Amazing how one organization gives up on you, trades you, whatever, and you get in a in another league and another uniform and another organization, and things just seem to click. What's interesting is the guy who's two doors down in the Cincinnati lineup was picked. In the first round, Austin Kearns that year by the Reds, number seven. Lopez was the very next pick by Toronto. And now here they are, teammates. There's that hard slider. We talked about that in the scouting report. They just feel like that was an area that Francis would have to go to if he was going to have success. You're going to wrap it right down in underneath that back foot. Get him out in front of it. It's great pitch by Jeff Francis. You're blocked by J.D. Klosser and a tag applied. Casey walked his first time up. I know it's early in this ball game, but George, after the last two outings for Jeff Francis, you just had the feeling. And again, I know it's early that he would come out and have a strong ball game. Well, he's a kid that'll go back and analyze every pitch in his mind and what did I do right, what did I do wrong. You know, and I, the one thing he mentioned to me twice after his last two starts is he said, I just, I'm not comfortable pounding that inside half of the plate with the fastball right now. I'm leaving it out over the plate too much. The right handed hitter, so he said, You know, I, I've got to figure out a way to do this. Good Pretty pitch. good inning. Yeah, real good inning. Give him the, give him the lead either anyway. There you go. Well, Jim, sorry you didn't win the weed eater, but the Rockies and Jeff France had a one, two, three inning. Middle of three, two. Well, it's Friday night. We always check out what's happening around baseball around the National League West. Royal Flush. How about Kansas City in last place? Worst record in baseball beat the Yankees three straight. The Giants traded Matt Hurgis once they got Latroy Hawkins. And Bud Selig responding, namely to Bobby Cox, who was so upset about the mm -hmm. Home run reversal. Brian Jordan had a home run that would have tied the baseball game a couple of days ago. It was reversed. And he wanted instant replay. And Bud said, nope, not into re instant replay in baseball. Though Frank Pulley was one night, wasn't he? Florida. Went over and looked at it. And got chewed out by the leaks, and you can't do that. And it was ruled in favor of the Florida Marlins. And Frank, I know you watch all the games as an umpire supervisor in Florida. So you can hear us talking about it. You can. Call us at 918-808-7699. <laughs> That's just a makeup number, guys. Two balls and a strike on Dustin Moore. And this ball's broke gap right center field. Roll to the wall. 
It'll get close. Moore now has a chance for three as he's overrun by Friel. Head first dive and a triple for Dustin Moore. What is it about the Cincinnati Reds and Dustin Moore? Man, whatever it is, it's good. Dustin Moore may have hurt himself coming into the bag over there. They've got time pulled out. Seven for eight now for Dustin Moore. He had a few long balls with it. Now look at this ball out into the gap in right center. As soon as it left the bat, he knew it. Then he cut the bag well at first. Got the second, shortened the distance there. That was just not going to stop him as he went into the third base bag. Freel in center field. He's playing straight up against Atkins. Atkins came up in the first with the bases loaded, and he smoked a one hopper right at Felipe Lopez. Infield back for Cincinnati. Well, by the way, Wednesday's night, ladies' night at the ballpark, sponsored by Big Old Tires. Come out to the ball game. All ladies coming through the gates at Coors Field, you receive a voucher for a future game here at Coors Field. Coors Field ticket office, the any Rockies dugout and King Superstores, 1 800 388 Rocker. Just go online with the Colorado Rockies.com. Two balls and a strike on Atkins. Eric Milton's 29 will be 30 later on this summer. <laughs> Milton last year was 14 and 6 with Philadelphia despite giving up those 43 home runs through 201 innings well, four times in his career he's thrown two innings and you, you know today if you throw two inning 200 innings you're kind of in the top of the elite status of pitchers because there's not many of those guys doing that that often no he did it three times with Minnesota his best year in the big leagues 2001 with Minnesota went 15 and 7 through 220 and two thirds. Yeah, he's part of that Chuck Knobloch trade that went to the Twins. And where I'll go that was. And this is right out in front of the plate. Milton turns and fires and gets Atkins. Moore stays put. Well, it's credit Milton for getting off the mound in a hurry, and he did just that too. Full swing right out in front. Ball died in the grass. Milton positioned himself perfectly as a left hand. He spun and fired to strike to Casey. Well, Desi Relaford, the right man for the job. First inning or second inning single and scored a run. He's got an eight game hitting streak. And check this out since Aaron Miles went on the disabled list May 26, Desi has started eight of his last nine. He's got an eight game hitting streak, 12 for 28. Five runs scored, five RBIs. The average setting at 330. Now their infield came in for one reason. I think they thought Desi might try to bump full swing and a soft pop-up to now, Joe Random. And now it's going to take a two-out hit from Klosser. And they may pass on Klosser and go right to Francis with first base open. I mean, that would be the prudent thing to do. Let's see what Miley, uh, yeah, there it is. Put him on. See, these are the little things, and we don't know what Jeff Francis is going to do. He has only one hit in his career. But, George, these are the little things, and I know the Rockies are ahead 2 to nothing. But when you have a runner at third and nobody out, he has got to score. No, no question, Drew. You've got to be able to get him in. I don't care. And, you know, pretty soon I think you put Clint in a position as a manager that certain parts of the order he may lay down a squeeze or he may try it. Just, just to get that run across, to do what he can because he can't sit and watch constantly that run not being scored from third, letting the youngsters swing it. So there may be times that he just say, hey, we'll try a squeeze occasionally. He's done that in the past as a manager. So J.D. has 
walked twice in the game. The first time was not intentional. And Jeff Francis will try to drive in. Dustin Moore at a leadoff triple. disciplined guy like every aspect of his game as a pitcher he works hard as a hitter also and though it hasn't been borne out yet in games he's improved swinging the bat look at it. he may have hurt his knee you know that yeah he did, yeah, I mean, he did he hurt his it. knee yes he did See what happens here. Yeah, see anytime you double that back over like that. Yeah, the spike gets caught. Mm -hmm. Look yeah, at that no, right look, leg. Look at that strain on the right leg right here. Ooh, as he boy. goes down. He's trying to walk it off right now. Well, believe me, Clint Hurdle, and he's going to get, before he lets Jeff Francis continue, he's going to get right in his face yeah, and make sure, because this game is small potatoes compared to the big picture. <laughs> We've seen Clint do that before. All right, watch that lead knee right here as he, as he tries to get out of the way of this pitch high and tight. It doubles. I mean, it's the ankle, it's the knee, it's everything. It's all tied together, and it's just turned the wrong way. He's like, "Oh, hey, that hurt." Taking off for second is J.D. Klosser. And the curveball was a hanger, two and one. That's still for Klosser, the first of his career. Are you gonna let him take the bag, George? Who was that? I'm sitting here trying to think of who. Was it Cecil, Cecil Fielder? He stole it, and he finally they said, all right, you can have the bag, too. And he stole one bag, so Cecil one didn't time. get too many. No. And they said, you know, go ahead and take the bag. So he took it. They gave it to him. I think it was Cecil. Yeah, his son, number one draft pick with Milwaukee. Uh, Prince is getting close. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Swing the bat very well, triple A. So is Richie Weeks. They have two of the top prospects in the minor leagues. Two balls, two strikes on Francis. Jeff takes a good hack there, fouls it off out of play. You know, the Rockies' schedule has been all fouled up this year, George. When the Rockies are on the road, it's beautiful back in Denver. And when they've come home, yeah. they've had some interesting cool. weather. Cool night tonight. I mean, it's probably, what, 55 right now? Maybe. 51 degrees at first pitch, Doug tells me. Oh man, I thought that was low. Evidently Sam Holbrook disagrees. So the Rockies leave two in scoring position, including Dustin Moore who led the inning off with a triple. Colorado the Rockies came up with a couple. Desi Relaford led it off with a base hit. Prosser walked and a nice sacrifice by Francis Barbas. Went down and got the fastball. And that base hit scored two runs. You're up to date. As we move to the top of the fourth inning, Drew Goodman, George Frazier, Keith Blyer, Jeff Francis will face Austin Kearns, Joe Randa, Rich Aurelia, four, five, and six in the lineup for the Cincinnati Reds. Well, there's Austin Kearns stepping in. He had a base hit his first time up. There's Randy Whistler, the first base coach for the Cincinnati Reds. You know where Randy lives now, George? Uh huh. Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. Well, you couldn't wait, could you? I could not huh? wait. I could. I've been waiting all afternoon. How to... about Randy Whistler? He's about to take the job as the first base coach for Rob Walton at Oral Roberts University. He says, Rob, I may have a chance. Sit down. Thank you. Uh, it didn't until 
That person caught it in the first row of the stands. That's what we were talking about earlier. Kearns has the ability to hit it out of any ballpark to all fields, and he just cut the lead in half. Anyway, Whistler had the opportunity. He was going to go to school or go to work for Oral Roberts University, and they said, hey, you know what? He might have a job for you in the big leagues. Really? Fastball up out of the strike zone. One thing I want to watch with Francis is the knee. Even though it's his right knee, which is plant leg, to see if he has that same bend and flexibility that he normally has in it. Miranda slashes this one down the right field line. It's hit hard, but it's foul. Must be the 9 o'clock train a little early here from Coors Field. It's only 8.40. You know who else from Broken Arrow, George? Do I know who else is yeah. from Broken Arrow? Well, let's see. There's Jim Brewer. Pitched yeah. in the big leagues for a long time. Brad, get, Brad, Brad Penny, Penny yeah. from Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. Is there another one? Well, you're just not saying the town right. Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. There you go. One and two. <laughs> <laughs> Joe Randa. You know, since the double A teams moved to Tulsa, it's amazing how many people. I mean, since there are many people that I do a radio show occasionally back there that call and say that they've bought the major league package. Because of all the young kids the Rockies have that participated in Tulsa. And, and you know, Barmas was uh, not there, but you know, they read about him as a young kid. Holiday was there, Hop was there, Sullivan was there. Uh, the pitcher tonight, Jeff Francis was there. Atkins. Atkins. I mean, all these kids that a couple of years ago were pitching in the city of Tulsa. A lot of, there's a lot of interest now in a town that has been Cardinal country for years. And, and that ball club, and we mentioned it the other day, and we do periodically, that ball club's. Playing very good baseball. Yeah, right now, six games up. 16 games to play in the first half. How about that? There's, I told him the other let's get you Baldo Jimenez in there. And they're going, man, you're going to stack this thing up. Yeah, yeah every time a Rockies uh, guy here on the big league roster gets hurt, I immediately go to Bill Guy Vett and Dan O'Dowd and said, don't you think he needs rehab in Tulsa? <laughs> I'll have to club out any way we can. There you go. Rich Aurelia is behind one and two, or excuse me, 0 oh and two. Aurelia had a gorgeous year in 2001 with the Giants hit 324 with a career high 37 home runs and he drove in 97 that year. Three times in his career he's hit more than 20. And he's overmatched by that fastball up high so Aurelia strikes out right behind Aranda four punch outs in the ball game. For Jeff Francis Jason LaRue will come up and we'll check our athletic trivia question. Who are the nine players in Major League history to hit 50 plus home runs in a season at least twice? I like this question. All right, let's. All right, Park, Parker's up here, so I just told Parker, let's go. So we yeah. got Barry Bonds. Hey, your son Sammy Parker's Sosa. here. Yes, Parker's in from Tulsa. We have, we have Barry Bonds. Sammy. But you know what? I don't think Bonds ever did it. I think he only hit 73 the one year. I don't think You're he right. ever hit 50. You know what? He didn't do it twice. So he hit 49. We got Sammy. You have Sammy at McGuire. Babe Ruth. Ruth. Maris. Jimmy Fox. Well, Jimmy Fox has to be there, doesn't he? Any like fifth on the list? See, I don't know if Mays did it twice. Well, I don't think, think he Hank did. Aaron, Hank well, Hank Aaron never hit 50. He never hit 50. 50 home runs. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, it is. 755 home runs. That's how steady he was. Palmero? Rafael uh, Palmero? No, I don't think so. I don't, I don't think so. And I think Luis Gonzalez did it just, just one, one year. 57 once. Two balls, two strikes on uh, Jason LaRue. What about Jason? Now, Giambi only had, what, one good year where he hit that, hit a bunch of home runs? How about A-Rod? How about a -Rod? Ooh, I forgot about A-Rod. I think A-Rod's done it. Has Junior done it? Who? Junior, Kent Griffey. You know, I hadn't thought about him. Yeah, Junior would be one. How about Gary Sheffield? Sheffield done it? I don't think Sheffield's done it. Swing's hard enough to do it. <laughs> he does. <laughs> Ball four. Well, I'm going to cheat on one guy and look up Junior. <laughs> You're going to look up Junior right look now? Junior, yeah. 
Hey, Junior, come out in the dugout. If you're in the locker room you watching, what? come out and give Jun me the yes Junior, or no. Junior, because in 97, he hit 56. And the next year, he had an off year, and he hit 56 again. He went, check this out, four-year period, Junior went 49, 56, 56, 48. You get a little tired the fourth year? I guess. That's at 48. Yeah. All right, now, hold on. We got, we got, I'm going to, how many guys do we have so far? Six? We have seven right now. We're probably forgetting somebody in modern times. See, I thought we Rafael Palmero. No, no, I said no. I He's got. Palmeiro's I'm thinking of guys with 500 yeah. home runs in the last. Pudge Rodriguez. No, he's never come close to 50. Well, how many is he hit in a year? He won the MVP. Did he hit 40 something? I think. I don't think he's got that high. One and zero on Romano. That's in there. One and one as Larue at first. Oh, we're being told we only have seven. Are the other two guys we don't have are like like 1891 or something? No. Nobody He's saying modern baseball. He's saying yeah. modern. Well, there's one guy. We already said it. Jason Romano won and two. He lost the bat. All right, modern baseball. It's a pine tar on that thing. Oh, since the 30s, dude. How about Hank Greenberg? He had 58 one year. He just, you got told one time. One time. Look at Doug behind you. I'll tell you. Am I right? Oh, no, one time. You're not right. <laughs> That's foul by about five yards. Yes, where's he mail the, where's he mail the booth when we need it? Come on. We have to wait till Tuesday. Now we're being told we only have six. They subtracted. What are you on. guys doing to us? Did I say Maris? You knew Maris had it one time? Yes. So Romano goes to first. And that'll bring up Eric Milt LaRue pushed to second. Oh, I'm thinking of one guy right now. I can't believe you had got him. You booed him. You booed him and scolded by your father. Willie That's Mays only... never did it. He didn't hit 50 twice. He did? <laughs> I didn't think he did. <laughs> How about that? Well, I stand corrected. Eric Milton guy, struck out his guy, first time up. Was the other guy a switch hitter? Played for the Yankees? Guy named Mantle? Pretty good, wasn't he? Yeah, we left right. him off the list. Not now, we have, now we only have one more to go, huh? You're on your own on this one. Oh, Two to one, Colorado Drew, leading. I am t being told. With LaRue and Robano. Foster on, yeah. did it once. George Foster did it one time. Got a big contract in the too. Uh, let's see. I'm being told that you should know. So that, that narrows it down to right. he's a map. Ed Cranepool. <laughs> huh? <laughs> Don't think so. Two and out. Oh. And Milton oh. takes a strike, two and one. Yeah, you should know. I was just told in my headset who it was. You've listened to him your whole life. Ralph Kiner. There you go, buddy. That's a pretty good one. <laughs> that only took us three innings. <laughs> What's the score now? <laughs> They're in the eighth. It's two to one Rockies. <laughs> that'll be the you want to know what, that'll be the last time this year we get a question that has more than one answer. Yeah, you know, it's like no more nine guys. names. Yeah. It's more like one name and you're done. You're right. You're right. I'd like to continue and try to answer this question on Sunday. Nope. Pokes at it. Stays a lot. Two balls, two strikes. Now, let me see if you could repeat, because they took them off the screen. Let me see if you can repeat them. No, don't, don't, don't do that. <laughs> I don't think I need to torment them at home anymore. No, I think you're right. 
Yeah. Vance has had to work uh, extra hard this inning. 2-2 two -two count, though, ahead of Romano. He drilled him. And a ground ball to Desi Relaford. That's it for Cincinnati in the fourth. They got on the board. Austin Kearns hits an opposite field home run off. Two to one, Colorado leading the Cincinnati Reds. We go to the bottom of the fourth inning. Clint Barm is to lead it off. Fans night out comes to the sports column before every Tuesday night Rockies home game. Audition to sing the national anthem at a future Rockies game and try to stump Keith Blyer with your sports trivia question. Don't miss the fun and prizes Tuesday night beginning at 5.30 at the sports column. Blyer would still be trying to figure out the nine guys that hit 50 plus twice. You could ask him though about soccer and he'd give you the answer in a heartbeat. Yeah, he knows all those Pele questions. 0 oh and 1, the changeup just missed. 1 and 1. Where'd he go anyway? Last time we saw him, he was fixing a salad. Where did he go? He's somewhere warm, I guarantee he, you. Well, he's probably to get two trays to carry all of our salads up here for us. What do you guys think? Not nah. doubt it. 2 and 1 on Barmus. Barmus uh, single his last time up to drive in the Rockies. Two runs. Luis Gonzalez on deck, and this ball. It up. Joe Randa in foul territory makes the catch. One out. I was just told we have to answer the Affleck question. Didn't we already do that? I thought we did. It took a while, but we got it. Affleck! All right, who are the nine players to hit 50 plus home runs in a season twice? You heard them last inning, now you see them in writing. Jimmy Fox, Babe Ruth, Willie Mays, Ralph Kiner, A-Rod, Mickey Mantle, Mark McGuire, Kent Griffey Jr., and Sammy Sosa. Sosa hit a home run the other day. It was the first time in almost a month he had hit one out. He's got five home runs so far with Baltimore. His presence in the lineup, though, along with everybody else. It's still a pretty potent lineup. Looking forward to going to Baltimore to watch the Orioles. Next road trip, the Rockies will go to Cleveland, Baltimore, and then they'll go to Houston as well. Just a little bit high. Tad. Gonzalez fouls the curveball off. You know, the win last night for the Rockies, I say last night, the game did start in the afternoon, but it finished in the evening. Third walk-off win <laughs> of the year for the Rockies. And listen to the teams they've beaten. San Diego, division leader in the West. Atlanta, division leader in the East. And now the Cardinals, division leader in Central. And, and the relievers they've beat, Trevor Hoffman, he has two blown saves all year. The Rockies handed him one opening day. And Isringhausen got his first yesterday. Three and two. Don't forget about your Coca-Cola value pack. It's back for two dates in June and July. For only $49, four outfield box tickets. Warmer hot dogs, four Coca-Cola fountain drinks, a parking pass, and a game program, all for $49. And this ball's driven to deep center field. Running over there is Ryan Friel. Good play by Friel. That ball was tattooed by Luis Gonzalez. Two outs, let's get to the studio. 
Dave Benz has an update on the Angels and Red Sox. Yeah, thanks a lot, Drew. Remember the other night, Johnny Damon went into the fence out in center field. Tonight, he hits the ball into center field to drive in a couple runs and break a four-all tie. Red Sox win 7-4, to four. and check out the close-up on Johnny Damon. Of course, he had to go clean-shaven to make room for the stitches. That's a different look for him. Matt Holiday fights one off to right center field, and making a running catch is Austin Kearns. He hit that a little better than it looked initially. Turns into a 1 2 3 inning. Rockies lead 2 to 1 as we go to the fifth. Horns. We go to the fifth inning, the top of the order for the Reds Ryan Friel, then Felipe Lopez, and Sean Casey to face Jeff Francis. Francis unbeaten in his career at Coors Field, 5 0 with a 270 ADRA. The only pitcher to start 6 0 in Rockies history, Darren Oliver. At Coors Field, that is. You look at what Jason Jennings has done at Coors Field, and now what Jeff Francis has done at Coors Field, and, and Sean Chacon has had pretty solid success at Coors mm -hmm. Field in his career. And you understand now why the Rockies will probably never delve into free agency when it comes to pitching again. They well, really believe that what is necessary is to grow their own. Well, I think the biggest question, you're not going to get guys to come here and pitch anyway. You're not going to get a high price, high high profile free agent that wants to come here because of the history of what's happened with Daryl Kyle, Hampton, and Nagel. The, the only way, George, you would is to ridiculously, as they've done in the past, overpay right. somebody. Right, and you're not going to do that uh, in this situation. What you do is you let these kids play out for a while, see what they do, and then add to the pieces if you need to. Yep. Now you might see him go out and get a reliever. Sure. Oh, absolutely. Lopez a, flies out at the first pitch. What a find for Jay Watasi. You bet. And he'd be able to get him when he was released. This guy's been phenomenal down there. Acevedo's throwing well. Cortez is throwing well. You know Acevedo wanted to be healthy to throw against oh, his man. former club this, you know that. this week. But Jose, who was out throwing before the ball game, but he's on the disabled list with a groin strain. Casey walked and bounced to short. Good pitch from Francis. I'd like to talk about plane in terms of the delivery to the plate. And he's got a downhill plane tonight. Big guy. You know, when you're six foot six, take advantage of that leverage with everything you have. One guy he's pitched extremely careful. It has been Casey. Grounded out and walked. Jeff Francis I think has the right demeanor to be a pitcher. He's not a guy that's going to get too high or too low. He was upset after his last outing. But he's not a roller coaster ride personality wise. Yeah. Jeff's he, kind of funny. Answer, you know, go ahead George. And we've talked about this a lot about Francis and maturity the poise that you heard about before he came to the big leagues. And, and just one of the few guys that asked the right questions looking for what answers he needs to find I mean it's 17 starts a 7 and 4 record obviously outstanding at Coors Field but he's just one of those guys that loves the game of baseball and and I don't mean this in a bad way with his intelligence he could have been a doctor he could have been a lawyer he wanted to be a baseball player figure things out I mean he's just one of those guys that I think he looks at a baseball game and a pitching duel is it like a chess match. And he's not afraid to get away from a guy like a Casey or Kearns and not let them beat you. Now obviously uh, Kearns earlier hit that home run off of him and it was on a fastball up and away from him. So we'll see how he pitches him this time. His first at bat Kearns with a single back up the middle on a fastball. Reds have three hits and now three walks. Burns is, as George talked about, two for two against Jeff Francis. Oh, 
talking about his personality. I was going to say it's the antithesis of uh, Jose Lima. <laughs> he's the anti Lima. Boy, is he a. Wow. How about Buddy Bell, huh? 4 0. He beats Texas 2 to 1 tonight in Kansas City. Pretty easy game. Yeah, the Yankees, they lose their four straight. They lose to Minnesota 6 to 3. You've seen it. Fifth straight for the Yankees. It's time about time for Steinbrenner's speech again. Yeah, I'll probably fly, uh, meet the Yankees on the road in Minnesota. <laughs> that was always one of his favorite cities. I don't know why. Inside two and one. Did he show up on the road a lot? Mm, Milwaukee. He liked to come to Milwaukee and stay at the Fister. He did. Loved it there. Then he and he'd show up in Minnesota, Chicago. Only because he owned Balmoral Racetrack, just south of Chicago, but he would show up in Chicago. Here's the two one on Kearns. That's in there two and two. You know it wasn't a pretty sight though when he showed up on the road I can tell you that. It's not going to be a nice speech way to go guys after the game. <laughs> He's not big on compliments is he? Well you know what. Yeah at times he is but the most of the time he's an old old school football coach that believes that if you embarrass and ride a guy he'll perform and bounce back and if he doesn't you don't want him on your team. Strike three the hook fans Austin Kearns. So after Kearns had singled and homered off of Jeff Francis. Francis gets the better occurrence there. Two to one Colorado. Preston Wilson, Dustin Moore.